Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems. Hey, I'm Tom Gozi. This week on Hot and Cold, we're going to do some car work, which has nothing to do with home improvements. But then again, it's stuff that I do that you probably, you know, when we live in Maine, we do interesting things. And I think this week will be a little bit more interesting maybe than other weeks. So what we have is something that I do a lot of, is I buy salvage vehicles, vehicles that have been in accidents. And this is one here. This is a, a 1999 Ford Escort ZX2, which is a little sporty type Escort. These are called frame horns here. These are, this is basically part of the chassis of the car, if there be such a thing of these types of cars. And this is what your bumper hooked onto. And this one is okay and this one is pushed down just a little bit. So we're gonna to try to fix that today. Um, the, it, it's not too far off, it, but we need to lift it up a little bit. It's pushed in a little bit underneath here. Levels have nothing to do with this project, <laughs> but it's a straight edge for me to kind of get a sense as to where things lie. And, you know, I, I don't do auto body work in the traditional way, as many of us don't here in Maine, if you're doing your own work. I don't have the equipment, but I do have something that's kind of cool. I got that. It's a forklift. And not everybody has a forklift, but you might have a tree and a four-wheel drive truck. I got the four-wheel drive truck here, too. But I think we could do this with the forklift today. And, and really, um, a lot of folks will do uh, body work with, on cars with something called a porter power, which is a hydraulic ram that you can push and pull and twist and do things with. Well, I don't have a port of power. I can get my hands on one, but if I find a forklift to be extremely uh, more user friendly for me and it's quick and easy and it has a tremendous amount of power. Power is good. So we're going to pull on this a little bit, see what we can do with it. We might be able to fix it with a forklift. Maybe a big end.
Okay, so just so you understand, bodywork is not pretty. <laughs> and believe it or not, similar things happen in a body shop. There's a lot of beating of metal that goes on. So this was not that abnormal, except that we're using a forklift. And, uh, but they do use heavy chains, they use hooks, and they grab metal, and they pull it and beat on it, and they continue to measure. The problem we have here is we cannot measure. We can eyeball and we can try to get close and when I get in some place where we have level uh, spot I'll check to determine the height between these two. They should be on the same plane horizontally. We'll straighten out the metal here that I've kind of deformed in the process but what I can see is this was pushed back a little bit. We brought it out. This piece here was bent a little but that's the radiator core support. We can adjust that. It's not that bad. The radiator is not leaking. The condenser is not leaking. All that is functional so we just need to see what we can do to make everything work as it should and fit as it should and we're pretty darn close considering how crude and I mean that on all so many levels how crude <laughs> this all is um, many people do this in Maine they hook up to a truck and a tree I don't have any trees here so we can't do that but let's bring it inside where it's flat and level and a little bit warmer and we'll then look at how bad or good this whole process was now what I've done in the back is we've chained this to the back of the pickup truck so the pickup um, is sort of the ballast for the backside. Um, you know a lot of cars, a lot of vehicles have these tow hooks here and they're not used for towing as such, they're used for tying down when their vehicles are being delivered and they're fairly rugged because they obviously have to hold the vehicle in place while it's being moved so, um, so that's a good place to hook on to at least for us. The dangerous part is that if a chain breaks or anything breaks you got to make sure nobody is in the vicinity of a flailing chain and we're talking about a lot of heavy metal and a lot of heavy forces and we want to have ten fingers two eyes a couple of legs and arms and assorted toes when we're done so we have to be extremely careful about this I can't emphasize that enough for all the kidding around I do about um, beating on things you know safety's number one and uh, we don't want to get hurt in the process of having fun. Let's bring this inside see what we got. Okay, so we got it inside now and now we get to do the tests. Now like I said, we don't have a frame set up, so we'll do the best we can. We're not level here, the beat, the ball, yeah, the, the beat is off a little bit, but the vehicle is off a little bit too. <laughs> it's the way the car is sitting, we're level with the top of this here and both these are in the same plane. They're parallel. That's the word, they're parallel. The other thing I look for is the height off the floor. And again, the floor is not real level. It's 21 here and it's 21 here. So that's pretty good. So this actually lifted up. What I was doing was trying to lift this piece, but this down here was bent and tucked under slightly. So when I pulled this out, everything lifted back up. And you know, you really have to kind of do some some uh, understanding of what's going on with the structure because I could have pulled here and maybe got that to come up but you could see nothing was moving very well so you know and, and it's a fine line between it working and you tearing a piece of steel and at that point you wind up at a body shop or you wind up doing a lot of welding and, and fixing and uh, this was not real bad so I'm comfortable with what we're going to do here now the, the um, challenge is to hunt the parts up and on the internet is the place to go for looking for parts and you can shop locally and I endorse that highly but a lot of times um, especially a car like this an Escort everybody it, it's kind of gone by a little bit it's a wonderful automobile I'm very impressed with how easy it is to work on and how well it runs but um, there's a lot of these a lot of parts for these vehicles a 10 year old car um, that are quite affordable. We have to do airbags in it and uh, shopping the parts now will be an important thing. When you're working on salvage vehicles, something to remember in the state of Maine, if you use used parts, you have to have documentation that gives you the VIN number that the uh, parts came from because the uh, people in Augusta are concerned about parts being stolen to fix cars and we obviously don't want to use stolen parts if we can avoid it. Um, and you have to, otherwise you won't get your, uh, they won't allow you to re-register the vehicle. So, so that's good stuff. We'll, but we can, we'll deal with that. We'll either buy new parts or we'll buy used parts and we'll make sure we have documentation for the used parts. So I think we can stop 
here I'm going to just tweak a few things here and clean up a bit. Um, this was not hurt real bad. My, my thing for vehicle repair is I have many hammers. Okay, the hammers, <laughs> this may not be much different from a body shop, wrenches, a lot of tools. The forklift is my secret weapon, and it really does, it is an extremely valuable tool. So through the magic of television, we fast forwarded, I don't know, a week or so, and we've got bits that are going together now. And <laughs> this is a home improvement show, yes, I know. But uh, I mean, you know, you live in Maine, you do this kind of stuff. And uh, to me, there's an exercise in, in patience in working on a car because if it went together, it comes apart. And a lot of times you can't see where the fasteners are. But rather than beat on it, as I did in my younger days, and I occasionally do now in moments of frustration, um, I take the time, having a little bit of knowledge about it, to find where the connectors are in the fasteners and put things together and take them apart. Where we had already taken everything apart, I kind of knew where everything went. But I thought I'd show you, because there's a couple of pieces I put on here since we were beating on the car. Two major components that were hidden behind the bumper. One is this plastic bracket which holds the headlights. I have one headlight in. I'm not sure I'm going to keep it in because this, this is the other headlight which got hit in the accident. This has to be replaced. But you see how cloudy that is. The plastic has just the, didn't age well. So um, obviously we cannot reuse that uh, because it's cracked and broken. But um, I, I may, I'm, I'm shopping around for a used set that is clearer than this where we have it all apart. It'd be kind of nice to, to do, um, to have better headlights. But um, the headlights go into this bracket, and there's connectors here. There's th um, three or four connecting points. There are, there's a bolt here, or a stud here and a stud here that uh, go on the, on the headlight. As a matter of fact, the old one is still in this because it broke off. Here's one tab that would slip on here. There was a bracket here that's broken off and there's a, a hole back here for a bolt to go through. And, uh, and we could actually make this, if, if this wasn't all busted up, if the tabs were broken, many times you can make it work. And uh, I did with this one, we used some big fender washers to fasten this to the bracket and it's solidly fastened. These brackets don't do well in accidents because it's plastic. So this was all busted up. We had to replace this. This was about 60 bucks. This is the part that makes the bumper work. This is the um, bumper support. And it's plastic again. A lot of times in cars you see them, they're made out of foam insulation, high density foam, that gives the uh, thing some resiliency. The, um, the original bumper support was that actually made out of a rigid plastic. This is a uh, more flexible plastic. This is polyethylene. And this will actually stand up better. This is an aftermarket bumper support. This is another, this is about 65 bucks. I actually bought this part on eBay um, for a fraction of what I could find it for locally. And uh, so, so that's pretty good. So we've got that together. Everything sort of lined up okay. If you remember over here, if I get the camera person to swing around, um, <clears throat> this was the support we were working on. And of course, what we want to see happen is we want to see the <laughs> bolt holes, uh, nut holes, whatever. The, the holes for the fasteners have to line up. It was close. It was off about a half inch that way. So I was able to just beat on it and drive the thing over that way a half inch and everything bolted right on. Everything is lined up properly. I've already had the bumper cover on once just to dry fit and it looks good. Everything lines up right. The other acid test you look for when you're doing car work is, um, is the reveal, which we look for this when we're doing doors and windows, in between the, uh, the hood, in this case, and the fender. The reveal is off a little bit here, and you can play with that. And I, I don't want to do it just yet, but I'll just show you. You know, a lot of times when you go in the, if you, if you have the luxury, I've had the luxury, of going into body shop while the guys are actually doing work. They're pulling on things and they're, they're adjusting the reveal. And there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can adjust the hood. In this case, um, I think the fender is probably a little bit more off than the hood is. But we'll go ahead and, and play with that. Uh, on the other side, it's OK. A lot of times when a car is hit, um, th this tells you a lot. 
this gap. Now the gap, if you look on your car, isn't always uniform. But uh, you know, it, it may be wider here than it is here. It might not be. Uh, in a car that's been hit, we're looking to see if things are parallel or if this gap is off and, and everything's kind of been tweaked sideways. And if it is, we obviously know we have more to deal with than just um, adjusting the gap. So it's just, you know, stuff that relates to, um, to cars. It's, car it's like carpentry, but there's no wood. I wish we had some wood to work with, I get, but, <laughs> but the uh, working with metal is, there's a lot of similarities here, except metal, um, um, if you put a hole in it, it's easier to patch and you can paint over it on a car. So um, let me open the hood again. Um, so before I open the hood though, uh, I've unlatched it. You can see the windshield is, is damaged. When the airbags deployed, the windshield got messed up. Um, and we've already replaced the airbags. That's usually a job best left to a professional. Uh, I've done it a few times, so it's, it's not um, that big a deal for me. Uh, whenever you're doing any major beating on an automobile, um, you always want to disconnect the battery for any number of reasons, not the least of which is if you're doing things like we were doing out there, left in the car, <laughs> you know, with your forklift. You got it in the garage, right? Uh, or even if you're just pulling on it with two vehicles or tied to a tree, you might deploy the airbag. So it's very important to disconnect the battery when you do that. Um, everything under the hood has been fine. The radiator was twisted slightly because this radiator support was off. When we pulled it back, we pulled everything back into the right plane and the radiator is holding fluid. The uh, air conditioner is holding uh, uh, its refrigerant, so all that's good. The uh, one thing that I have a lot of fun with is anytime I get a salvage vehicle, usually they've sat for at least six months. The batteries always go dead. And I have a special battery charger. It's a desulfation charger. And if you've ever seen anything about desulfators, uh, what they do is when, when car batteries sit for a while, especially if there's a clock or something running in the car, the battery will run down and it sulfates up the battery. Um, I've had very good success with these kind of cars that have sat for a long time, desulfating the battery. This car wouldn't, if I jumped it, it was hard to get it to start because the battery was so flat, it was just pulling all the juice out and not allowing the starter to get enough power. So we took the battery out, desulfated it for maybe a day and a half, put a charge on it, and it's been fine. It's been sitting here for a couple of weeks as I've been tinkering on it, and it starts up every time. Um, so the other part now, we've got all this done. We've got, we know everything works. Um, the only thing we've got left to do is get a headlight, fix the windshield, and this car's ready to go. Uh, is the, what, there's one other part though, which is over here. It's the bumper cover, the pretty part that you look at that's nice and smooth, which unfortunately in this case is not very smooth. So the bumper cover is the part of the car that you see. All the other stuff that's probably more important is behind the bumper cover, but this, is, this comes off, it just bolts on. Um, and <clears throat> most of these smaller cars use 10 millimeter uh, fasteners, bolts. And uh, this one is marginal at best, but until I find a replacement, we'll keep doctoring it. It's got a couple of tears. I suspect that's from the accident. Um, and, and you can get adhesives to glue that back together. I'm not sure what we're going to do with that, if we're going to glue it together or not. Um, I'm still kind of on the fence. But in the meantime, uh, I've been just working at it. What, what happens with this, this is plastic. The, the native color, the original color of the plastic is this gray color. And um, being plastic, they, they obviously sprayed paint on to match the color of the car. And when it got hit, it tended to flake off. And um, to deal with that, we, I scraped off or flaked off some of the flaky stuff. And then I sanded the rest because we really have to feather the edge, which is typical for any kind of refinishing. And you can see here, I've just kind of feathered some of that. Some of this here is, is, is flake, but it's not feathered. And I'm, I'm just using a, a small random orbital sander. And just going over that and, and making it smooth. And, and this is a, a 120 grit paper. And then I'll go over it and wet sand it to make it nice and smooth. And then after that, I don't have any here with me, but I will get some uh, uh, filling primer. It's a sandable primer that actually helps to fill small incongruities. And then we'll probably touch up a little bit with some spot filler 
areas. So, you know, the, the, this is where you spend a lot of money with a body shop because they're going to spend a lot of time making this. First of all, they wouldn't do this. <laughs> They would buy a new one. That's, you know, it, it, it really, uh, when you trade off labor against material costs, a lot of times the labor is expensive enough that it's cheaper to just buy a new part. In this case, the labor is free, so we can afford to monkey around and then maybe replace it anyway. But, um, you know, it's, it's sort of intact, um, and it, I mean, this is not a, uh, this car's got some high miles on it, so I'm not sure we want to invest a lot of money in this. We'll make it look good, but it won't be perfect the way, a, a, you know, if this was a, a, a two-year-old car, we'd want to do everything absolutely to the nines. In this case, we can, we can play with it. So, you know, I just um, am picking at it here uh, in between when I have time and uh, feathering the edges of everything. And when I'm done with that, I'll, I'll probably get a, a pint or a quart I'm debating whether I'm going to paint the whole front of the car or just the bumper cover and do some touch-up on the areas where there's been some, you know, little dings from the accident. Um, but this is the critical part. We could get away with just painting this, and uh, there's there's not much to it. If you look on the top here, again, now that it's apart, it's pretty easy. There's one, two, three uh, bolt holes here. If we look at the bottom, and we have the luxury of looking, there's one here where this got pulled out from the car. So there's one, two, three, four at the bottom edge. And where this intersects with the, um, with the fender, we've got two connection points, actually three connection points. This is in the wheel well. There's one here and there's two in the front of the fender. So there's a lot of fastening points because this is just a floppy piece of plastic. And when you are going down the interstate at 90 miles an hour, seeing if the police are going to find you or not, you don't want this coming off. Even though wind resistance is pushing it against your car, it'll still fall off. So we got to have all the fasteners back in place. And, uh, and we will. And they're all 10 millimeter fasteners, so it makes it very simple. And um, that's really the last big thing we have to do. We'll have somebody do the windshield for us. I'm not into doing windshields. And, uh, and that'll work well. So, you know, um, another thing, this is a great color to work with red because I was able to match it. If I wanted to use spray paint, canned spray paint, I actually found a red spray paint in a can that matches this color exactly. Uh, and so it's not very expensive. I like to work with white cars because white's also usually fairly easy to, to match up. Um, could probably get similar results with a black car, but black paint really shows everything. So anything, any imperfection is going to show with black. So red is, you know, you see so many red cars because it's a good color for working with. It's a good color. Show, it doesn't show a lot of imperfections. And when we're done, I'm sure there will be some imperfections. <laughs> but anyway, so I think we're, uh, we've got most of this under control. The, uh, the hard part was just pulling it out a little bit. Um, if you want to do a project like this, there's only limited places you can buy salvage vehicles. Uh, if you Google salvage vehicles, you'll uh, rebuildable salvage vehicles, you'll find them. You really need to have somebody who knows bodywork going with you to look at them to buy one, though. I have, uh, I have a Prius that I drive that was a salvage vehicle. And uh, it was one of those deals where I knew it needed a lot of work. And I, in a moment of weakness, said, oh, we'll get this anyway. And that comment, that simple transitory lapse of judgment cost about $3,000 extra because I had to go to a body shop, it had to be on a frame machine, and I had to have somebody who was an expert do that, and then we had to also hunt up the parts. Fortunately, I hunted up the parts. And, uh, and it's good to check on eBay, it's good to check online. There's a, a good website, car-parts.com, where you can get a feel for what the cost is. Certainly check all the local junkyards because they have some excellent deals and some excellent service, but you want to shop. A lot of parts for these. This is, ain't like a Prius. This is a lot simpler. There's a lot of parts. I've looked on eBay and replacement motors for these start at around $149 and go up to maybe $500. So that's, that's nice to know that you can... Now, it's a fairly recent car. It has not dead-ended too far. I mean, it is no longer, they're no longer making escorts, but the parts are still plentiful, and not being a car that's being currently produced, the prices are actually dropping. So that's good to know. Anyway, we got to go. We're out of time. Our website's at the end of the show. If you'd like to check things out, what we're up to on there, and we will see you next week where we get back to uh, home, home improvement things. Should we do that? 
I think, well, we, we, we might. We, we got a lot of stuff to do. It's, you know, it's springtime in May and we got a lot to do. See you. Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems.